Thank you for joining us today. You're a renowned neurosurgeon who had a profound near-death experience. Can you tell us about your background before your near-death experience? Of course. I'm Dr. Ethan Blackwood, 52 years old. I've been a practicing neurosurgeon for over 20 years at New Hope Medical Center in Chicago. My life changed dramatically three years ago when I had a near-fatal car accident on my way to an emergency surgery. Can you walk us through what happened that day? It was a rainy Tuesday morning in April. I received an urgent call about a patient with a severe brain hemorrhage. As I was rushing to the hospital, my car hydroplaned on the wet highway. I lost control, and the vehicle rolled multiple times down an embankment. The last thing I remember was the sickening crunch of metal and glass before everything went black. That sounds terrifying. What happened next? What came next was, extraordinary. I found myself floating above my mangled car. At first, I thought I was dreaming, I've had flying dreams before, but this felt different. I could control my movements with just a thought. When I tried to descend, I couldn't. Instead, I felt a gentle upward pull. Were you aware that you had died at this point? Not immediately. It took me a moment to process what was happening. I looked down and saw my body, partially ejected from the driver's side window. That's when I realized, if that's me down there, then what am I up here? Can you describe what you saw or felt during this out-of-body experience? Everything was incredibly vivid. My vision was clearer than it had ever been, even better than with my glasses. I could feel the chilly April air and the warmth of the morning sun. But what truly caught my attention was what I saw in the sky above me. What did you see? It's hard to put into words, but I'll try. There was a, vortex, I suppose you could call it. A gap in the sky filled with swirling clouds and what looked like plasma lightning. Inside this vortex were stars, but not like the ones we see at night. These were like the center of the universe, revolving around the brightest light imaginable. That sounds incredible. How did you react to this sight? I was awestruck. I remember exclaiming, oh my god, you are real. I felt so small, so humbled. All my years of scientific knowledge and skepticism melted away in an instant. I realized how naive I had been my entire life. Did you have any interaction with this light or any beings? Yes, and this is where things get even more extraordinary. I experienced what I can only describe as a life review. I saw my entire life from God's perspective, every decision, every action. It was overwhelming, especially when I saw the times I had been selfish or hurtful to others. The pain of this realization was intense. That sounds like an emotionally challenging experience. What happened next? Just when I thought I couldn't bear it anymore, an entity composed of pure light approached me. I believe this was Jesus, though not in the form we typically see in artwork. This being radiated a level of compassion and love that I can barely describe. Can you tell us more about your interaction with this being? The being, Jesus, touched me and said, I'll take it. It's for me. Suddenly, all the pain and guilt I had been feeling vanished. He told me I was forgiven, that being human inherently means we will make mistakes. The relief I felt was indescribable. That's fascinating. Did you have any further communication with this being? Yes, and this is where things got really interesting. Once the initial overwhelming emotions subsided, I found myself filled with curiosity. I started asking questions like an excited child, about aliens, UFOs, parallel universes, you name it. And how did Jesus respond to these questions? I heard what I can only describe as a loving chuckle. Then, something incredible happened. It was as if the top of my head opened up, and I could suddenly access all the knowledge of the universe. I understood everything, from the Big Bang to the eventual end of the universe, and even beyond that. That's an incredible claim. Can you elaborate on what you learned? It's difficult to put into human terms, but I'll try. I saw the cycle of the universe, Big Bang, expansion, contraction, and then Big Bang again. I understood the nature of reality, consciousness, and existence itself. I realized that God is everything that has ever been and everything that will never be. But I also understood that as a human, my comprehension of this vast knowledge is limited by my human perspective. Did you learn anything about extraterrestrial life? Yes, I did. The universe is teeming with life, in forms we can scarcely imagine. But I also understood why we haven't made contact yet. The vastness of space and the differences in how various life forms perceive and interact with reality make communication incredibly challenging. It's not as simple as picking up an intergalactic phone. This is all incredibly profound. How long did this experience last from your perspective? It felt like an eternity and an instant all at once. Time didn't exist in the way we understand it. 
but eventually, I became aware that I needed to return to my body. Can you describe the process of returning to your body? It was like trying to fit a supercomputer into an old desktop. I had to let go of much of the universal knowledge I had gained to fit back into my physical form. I re-entered through the top of my skull, and it felt like an airtight seal closing. What happened when you were back in your body? At first, it felt like entering an abandoned house, cold, quiet, and empty. I had to consciously restart my bodily functions, like telling my heart to beat and my lungs to breathe. It was a struggle to move, and when I opened my eyes, all I could see was blood. That sounds terrifying. Were you alone at this point? No, thankfully. A soldier who had witnessed the accident was there. He thought I was dead and was crying when I started moving. I told him I had just spoken to God and that everything would be okay. He held my hand until the paramedics arrived. What was the extent of your injuries? They were severe. Multiple fractures, internal bleeding, and a particularly complex pelvic fracture. I spent 36 hours in and out of consciousness in the ICU. The doctors weren't sure if I would survive. Did you have any more supernatural experiences during this time? Yes, I did. I spent a lot of time hovering above my body, watching the medical team work. A priest came in several times to give me last rites, but each time, I would return to my body and insist I wasn't going to die. That must have been surreal. Did you see Jesus again during this time? I did. He appeared to me in a more human form this time, a handsome face with wide brown eyes, a strong jawline, and long, curling black hair. He wore a simple robe, but it was filled with the most beautiful light. He touched my hand, and I felt warmth throughout my entire body. After that, my condition stabilized. How long was your recovery process? It was long and challenging. I spent five weeks in the hospital, followed by six months in a rehabilitation center. It took nine months before I could stand, and six more before I could walk. But now, three years later, I can even dance pain-free. How has this experience changed your life? It's changed everything. My perspective on life, death, and the nature of reality has been completely transformed. I've become more compassionate, more aware of the impact of my actions on others. I've also become more open to the mysteries of the universe. As a neurosurgeon, I used to believe that consciousness was simply a product of brain function. Now, I understand that it's so much more than that. You mentioned earlier that you understood everything about the universe during your experience. Can you share any specific insights that might be relevant to current scientific understanding? It's challenging because much of what I understood goes beyond our current scientific frameworks. But one thing that stood out was the nature of dark matter and dark energy. I saw that what we call dark is actually teeming with life and energy, just in a form that our current instruments can't detect. It's like, imagine fish trying to understand the concept of air. We're limited by our perceptions and the tools we've developed based on those perceptions. That's a fascinating analogy. Did you gain any insights about human consciousness or the brain? Yes, and it's revolutionized how I think about the brain. I saw that consciousness isn't produced by the brain, but rather the brain acts as a receiver and translator of consciousness, which exists at a fundamental level of the universe. It's similar to how a radio doesn't produce the music it plays, but receives and translates radio waves into sound. That's a profound shift from the mainstream neuroscientific view. How has this affected your approach to your patients, especially those with brain injuries? It's given me a new perspective on recovery and the potential of the human mind. I now see the brain's plasticity in a new light. I encourage my patients to engage in mental exercises and meditation, understanding that consciousness can influence physical healing in ways we're only beginning to understand scientifically. You mentioned earlier that you asked about aliens. Can you elaborate on what you learned about extraterrestrial life? What I understood is that life is abundant in the universe, but it exists in forms and dimensions that are often incomprehensible to us. Some civilizations are so advanced that their very nature of existence is different from ours. They don't necessarily have physical bodies as we understand them, but exist as energy or consciousness. This is part of why detection and communication are so challenging, we're often looking for life that's similar to us, but the most advanced forms are very different. That's incredibly intriguing. Did you gain any insights about the purpose of human life or why we're here? Yes, and it's both simple and profound. Our purpose is to experience, to learn, and to grow. Each life is a unique perspective through which the universe experiences itself. Our struggles, our joys, our relationships, they're all part of this grand tapestry of experience. The key is to approach life with love, compassion, and a desire to understand and help others. 
That's beautiful. How has this understanding changed how you live your day-to-day -day life? It's made me much more present and appreciative of each moment. I try to approach every interaction, every challenge, as an opportunity for growth and understanding. I've become more patient, more forgiving, both of myself and others. I also try to share the love and compassion I experienced during my NDE. It's changed how I interact with my patients, my colleagues, my family, everyone, really. You mentioned that you saw the cycle of the universe, Big Bang, expansion, contraction, and then Big Bang again. How does this align with or differ from current cosmological theories? It aligns in some ways and differs in others. The concept of a cyclic universe isn't new in cosmology, but what I saw goes beyond our current theories. I understood that what we perceive as the beginning and end of the universe are actually transitions in a much larger, ongoing process. The Big Bang isn't a singular event, but part of an eternal cycle. What's fascinating is that each cycle retains a sort of memory from previous cycles, influencing the evolution of the next universe. That's a mind-bending concept. Did you gain any insights into the nature of time itself? Yes, and it's one of the most difficult concepts to convey. What I understood is that time, as we perceive it, is an illusion created by our limited perspective. In the higher reality I experienced, all times, past, present, and future, exist simultaneously. It's like looking at a completed book. Each page exists at the same time, but when we're reading it, we experience it sequentially. This understanding has profound implications for concepts like free will and predestination. That's fascinating. Speaking of free will, did you gain any insights into that age-old philosophical question? It's a complex topic, but what I understood is that free will and determinism aren't mutually exclusive as we often think. From our limited perspective, we make choices and those choices matter. But from the higher perspective, all potential choices and their outcomes already exist. Our consciousness navigates through these potentials, creating our experienced reality. It's like we're simultaneously the authors and the characters in our own story. That's a lot to process. Let's shift gears a bit. You mentioned that you saw your life review from God's perspective. Can you tell us more about that experience? The life review was one of the most profound and challenging parts of my experience. I relived every moment of my life, but not just from my perspective. I experienced the effects of my actions on others, every kind word, every harsh comment, every decision. I felt the joy I'd brought to others, but also the pain. What was most striking was seeing how my actions created ripple effects, influencing people and events far beyond what I'd realized. That sounds incredibly intense. How did this experience affect you emotionally? It was overwhelming. I felt immense joy for the good I'd done, but also deep remorse for the times I'd hurt others, even unintentionally. What I realized is that every interaction, no matter how small, has the potential to profoundly affect someone's life. It's made me much more mindful of my words and actions. Did you gain any insights about good and evil, or the nature of morality? What I understood is that our concept of good and evil is a simplified view of a much more complex reality. Actions have consequences, and those consequences ripple out in ways we can't always foresee. But there wasn't a sense of judgment in the way we often think about it. Instead, it was about understanding, growth, and learning from our choices. The key is to act with love and compassion, to strive to reduce suffering and increase understanding. That's profound. Now, you mentioned that Jesus forgave you. Can you elaborate on that experience? The forgiveness I experienced was unlike anything I've ever felt. It wasn't just words, but a tangible force of pure love and acceptance. At that moment, I understood that divine love is unconditional and all-encompassing. It doesn't negate the consequences of our actions, but it provides the foundation for growth and healing. This forgiveness wasn't just for specific actions, but a complete acceptance of my whole being, flaws and all. That sounds incredibly powerful. How has this experience of forgiveness affected your life since then? It's transformed how I view myself and others. I've become much more forgiving, both of myself and of others. I understand now that we're all on our own journeys of growth and learning. This doesn't mean condoning harmful actions, but rather approaching them with compassion and a desire to help others learn and grow. It's also made me more open about my own mistakes and shortcomings. I find that by being vulnerable and honest about my own struggles, I can connect more deeply with my patients and help them in their healing journeys. Has this experience affected your medical practice? Absolutely. I approach my patients with a new level of empathy and understanding. I'm more open to discussing spiritual aspects of healing with those who are interested. 
I've also become involved in research on consciousness and near-death experiences, trying to bridge the gap between science and spirituality. That's fascinating. Do you ever doubt your experience or wonder if it was just a hallucination caused by your brain during trauma? It's a fair question, and one I've grappled with. As a scientist, I've considered all the rational explanations. But the clarity, the depth of the experience, and the profound changes it's brought to my life convince me that it was real. The knowledge I gained, particularly about the universe and consciousness, goes far beyond anything I knew or could have imagined before. Have you shared your experience with your colleagues in the medical field? Yes, I have, and the reactions have been mixed. Some are fascinated and open to the possibilities it suggests about consciousness and the nature of reality. Others are skeptical, which I understand. I was a skeptic myself before this happened. But I found that many doctors, especially those who work closely with death and dying, are more open to these experiences than you might expect. Let's go back to the moment when you were returning to your body. You described it as trying to fit a supercomputer into an old desktop. Can you elaborate on that experience? Certainly. During my near-death experience, I had access to this vast, universal knowledge. It was as if I could understand everything about existence all at once. But our physical brains aren't designed to hold that much information or process reality in that way. So, as I was being pulled back into my body, I felt this sense of compression. It was like I had to let go of most of what I had learned and understood in order to fit back into my physical form. Was that process painful or distressing? It wasn't painful in a physical sense, but it was somewhat distressing. There was a feeling of loss, of leaving behind this incredible state of knowledge and unity. But at the same time, I understood that it was necessary. We're here in this physical reality for a reason, and part of that reason is to learn and grow through the experience of limitation. That's fascinating. Now, you mentioned that when you first re-entered your body, you had to consciously restart your bodily functions. Can you describe that process in more detail? It was a surreal experience. When I first re-entered my body, it felt cold and empty, like an abandoned house. I had to consciously focus on each bodily function to get it working again. I remember thinking, okay, heart, start beating, and feeling the slow, laborious thumps as it began to pump. Then I focused on breathing, telling my lungs to expand and contract. It was as if I was relearning how to inhabit a physical form. That sounds incredibly challenging. How long did this process take? It's hard to say exactly. Time felt very fluid during this period. But from what I understand from the medical reports, it was probably only a matter of minutes. However, those minutes felt like an eternity to me. You mentioned that when you opened your eyes, all you could see was blood. That must have been terrifying. It was alarming, certainly. But oddly, I felt a sense of detachment from it. I knew intellectually that this was serious, but after what I had just experienced, the physical reality seemed less, well, real. I was more focused on trying to communicate, to let someone know that I was still here. And that's when the soldier who witnessed your accident realized you were alive? Yes, exactly. I remember him crying, holding my hand. When I told him I had just spoken to God, I think he thought I was delirious. But his presence was incredibly comforting. It helped ground me back in this reality. You mentioned that during your time in the ICU, you had more out-of-body experiences. Can you tell us more about those? Yes, for the first 36 hours or so, I was in and out of consciousness. During the periods when I was out, I found myself hovering above my body again. I could see the medical team working on me, hear their discussions. It was like watching a medical drama, except I was the patient. Were you able to recall and verify any of the conversations or procedures you witnessed during these out-of-body experiences? Yes, and this is one of the aspects that convinced me these experiences were real and not just hallucinations. I was able to recount details of procedures and conversations that happened while I was technically unconscious. For example, I described a conversation between two surgeons about a challenging aspect of my pelvic reconstruction, which happened while I was under general anesthesia. I later verified this with the surgeons, who were astonished that I knew about it. That's incredible. Now, you also mentioned that a priest came to give you last rites several times. How did you experience that? Yes, that's right. Each time the priest began the last rites, I would find myself pulled back into my body. I would try to speak, to tell them I wasn't going to die. I'm not sure if I actually managed to make any sound, but I was certainly trying. It was frustrating because I knew with absolute certainty that it wasn't my time to go, but I couldn't effectively communicate that. And during this time, you said you saw Jesus again, this time in a more human form. 
Can you describe that encounter? Yes, this appearance was different from the being of pure light I had encountered earlier. This time, he appeared as a man, a very radiant man, but recognizably human. He had a kind face with expressive brown eyes, long curly black hair, and he wore a simple robe. But the most striking thing was the light that seemed to emanate from him. It wasn't like any light I've seen before, it was warm, comforting, and seemed to be alive somehow. What happened during this encounter? He didn't speak this time, at least not in words. But when he touched my hand, I felt this incredible warmth spread through my entire body. It was more than just physical warmth, it felt like pure love and healing energy. After that touch, my condition stabilized. The medical team later told me that they were amazed at how quickly I improved after that point. That's remarkable. Now, let's talk about your recovery process. You mentioned it took nine months before you could stand, and another six before you could walk. That must have been an incredibly challenging time. It was, without a doubt, the most physically and emotionally challenging period of my life. As a neurosurgeon, I was used to being the one providing care, not receiving it. It was humbling to need help for even the most basic tasks. But it was also an incredibly valuable experience. It gave me a new perspective on what my patients go through, which has made me a better doctor. How did your near-death experience influence your approach to this challenging recovery period? It gave me an unshakable sense of purpose. Even on the hardest days, when progress seemed impossible, I held on to the understanding I had gained during my NDE. I knew that this struggle was part of my journey, part of what I needed to experience and overcome. It also gave me a deep appreciation for the miracle of the human body and its capacity for healing. That's a powerful perspective. You mentioned earlier that you can now dance pain-free. That must feel like a miracle after what you've been through. It absolutely does. Every step, every movement is a reminder of how far I've come and how precious life is. I make it a point to dance every day, even if it's just for a few minutes. It's my way of celebrating life and the incredible journey I've been on. That's beautiful. Now, you've mentioned that this experience has changed your approach to your medical practice. Can you give us some specific examples of how? Certainly. One major change is in how I communicate with patients, especially those facing life-threatening conditions. I'm much more open to discussing the spiritual and emotional aspects of their experience, not just the physical. I encourage patients to share their fears, their hopes, and any spiritual beliefs they have, as I've seen how these can play a crucial role in the healing process. I've also become a strong advocate for improving end-of-life care. My experience has given me insights into what patients might be experiencing as they approach death, and I work to ensure they're treated with the utmost compassion and dignity. Additionally, I've started incorporating mindfulness and meditation techniques into treatment plans, especially for patients dealing with chronic pain or recovering from severe injuries. I've found that these practices can have a profound impact on both physical and emotional healing. That's fascinating. Has your experience influenced your research interests as well? Absolutely. I've become deeply interested in the intersection of neuroscience and consciousness studies. I'm currently involved in a research project studying the brain activity of people who have had near-death experiences, trying to understand the neurological correlates of these profound experiences. I'm also collaborating with quantum physicists to explore theories about consciousness that go beyond the traditional materialist paradigm. The goal is to develop a more comprehensive understanding of consciousness that can account for experiences like NDEs. That sounds like groundbreaking work. Now, I'm curious. Has your experience changed your views on religion or spirituality? It deepened and broadened my spiritual understanding. Before my NDE, I would have described myself as agnostic. I believed in the possibility of something beyond our physical reality, but I wasn't committed to any particular belief system. Now, I have a profound sense of the spiritual nature of reality. But it doesn't fit neatly into any one religious tradition. What I experienced was beyond any human conception of God or the divine. It was a sense of all-encompassing love and unity that transcends our earthly divisions. I've found beauty and truth in many different spiritual traditions since my experience. I see them as different perspectives on the same ultimate reality. But I also believe that direct personal experience of the divine is available to everyone, not just through near-death experiences, but through practices like meditation, prayer, and mindful living. That's a beautiful perspective. Now, as we start to wrap up, I'm curious, what would you say to skeptics who might dismiss your experience as a hallucination caused by a traumatized brain? I completely understand the skepticism. 
As I mentioned earlier, I was a skeptic myself before this happened. And as a neurosurgeon, I'm well aware of how the brain can create vivid experiences, especially under extreme stress. But there are several aspects of my experience that are difficult to explain through purely materialist models. The verifiable information I gained while supposedly unconscious, the profound and lasting changes in my personality and worldview, the consistency of my experience with thousands of other reported NDEs from around the world, these all suggest that something more is going on. I would encourage skeptics to keep an open mind and to look at the growing body of research on NDEs. While we don't have all the answers, the evidence suggests that these experiences are more than just hallucinations. That said, I don't think everyone needs to believe in NDEs or an afterlife. What's most important is how we live this life, with compassion, love, and a desire to grow and help others. That's a message I think everyone can get behind, regardless of their beliefs about what happens after death. That's a very balanced and thoughtful response. As we conclude, what would you say is the most important lesson or insight you've gained from your near-death experience? The most profound insight I gained is the fundamental interconnectedness of all things. We are all part of a larger whole, intimately connected to each other and to the universe itself. This understanding has filled me with a deep sense of responsibility and purpose. Every interaction, every choice we make, has ripple effects that extend far beyond what we can see. So the most important thing we can do is to approach life with love, compassion, and a genuine desire to help others and contribute positively to the world. I've also learned the importance of being present in each moment. This life, this experience we're having right now, is incredibly precious. It's easy to get caught up in regrets about the past or anxiety about the future, but the present moment is where life actually happens. Lastly, I've learned that growth often comes through challenges. The difficult experiences in our lives are opportunities for learning and evolution. So while we shouldn't seek out suffering, when challenges do come, we can approach them with an attitude of curiosity and openness to what they might teach us. Thank you so much for sharing your incredible story with us. Your insights are truly profound and give us much to think about regarding the nature of life, death, and consciousness. Thank you for allowing me to share my experience. I hope it provides some comfort, hope, and food for thought to those who hear it. Remember, the greatest mysteries of existence are not just out there in the cosmos, but within each of us. Never stop exploring, questioning, and seeking to understand.